much about him or you may not know much about the sport, but I'm telling you, getting into the UFC is extremely hard, okay? He just said it, two people from the state of Massachusetts are, the, are representing Massachusetts, him and somebody else, and that's it. All right, so I want you guys to listen to him a little bit. Um, maybe if you want, we can start with questions, but I want this to be really relaxed. To be a really relaxed conversation. Okay. <laughs> so guys, how you doing? Good. Good. Oh, that's not so boring. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. They just tired. took oh, my cast. The test was it cast today? Yeah. How was that? Good. Good. All right. Absolutely. All right. So guys, I'm here to talk to you, especially, and I know you guys more of his, more of the um, speakers before. People who talked to before. But the reason why I've been talking younger because I'm from the same area. I come from. Okay, even if I'm from, from Boston, Massachusetts, we're all the same in my eyes, okay? Now, the reason is because a lot of athletes, you know, y'all see on TV and stuff like that, you know, they tell you, you know, stay in school, all this bull crap and all this, which is true, but they don't come from where y'all come from, okay? And a lot of people don't know that you will have people who come from the same, like the wizard, y'all, and make it to the big show, okay? Like she said, I've been to the UFC, I've been on TV, pay-per-view, everywhere, but what y'all don't know, it's also been in Brazil, Thailand, China, Japan, all over the world. When I leave this this country, both like Japan and stuff like that, when I get off the plane, these people are screaming my name, crazy experience. Okay? But that's the plus side. Now I'm gonna tell you where I, where I come from. Okay? I was growing up in Roxbury and Dorchester, okay? one of the roughest neighborhoods ever. Okay, yeah, I think I come from a rough neighborhood. I come from a rough neighborhood. Okay? I mean rough drug dealers, gangs getting jumped, beat up, um, peer pressure, all kinds of stuff, okay? And it's not as near as bad as it is now today, okay? Not only that, I come from a single um, home family, okay? I had a mom who raised me all stuff. I had a dad, but he was a crackhead. You know, he's an a-hole for that. You know, and some of the experience, I'm pretty sure y'all can relate to, okay? And what it is, is I'm here to talk perseverance and how hard it actually is, okay? Anything y'all want to do in life, it doesn't matter how simple, it doesn't matter how com complex it is, it's going to be hard. Okay? It's going to be hard. There's no easy way about it. It's going to be hard. Hard work. That's what it is. Okay? I'll tell you about my training regimen. I train four to six hours a day. A day. Okay? I'm not talking about, you know, you see people are playing fitness, you know, in the gym, mm -hmm. cue, you know, running. No, no. I'm talking about lifting weights, sparring. Grappling. Wait, what's sparring? Sparring is going hand in hand combat with somebody. Sparring is when like I go stand up with each other. We basically almost try to knock each other out. I that's my almost every day to day training. Okay, I burn almost two to three thousand calories a day. Okay, if y'all know the science of it, try to go on a treadmill and run or walk for hours. See how many calories you burn. Probably about when you burn two to three hundred. That's it. So times what you do on the treadmill by ten a day. Okay. Now, I know a lot of people, a lot of kids, they say they want to be rappers, they want to be, you know, athletes, they want to do this and that. I'm gonna tell you right now, I personally know Lil Wayne. I met him. Okay? What y'all see on TV is BS. Okay? What you see on TV is just the nice part of it, the end part of it, the successful part. You don't see him in the studio twelve hours a day, him sitting there writing, him working, him get up three o'clock, four o'clock morning to do an interview, get on the to talk to people and stuff like that, okay? Now he doesn't come out like I do because what he does, but that's the truth, okay? Doesn't matter how successful you are, doesn't matter what you want to do, it's always hard work, okay? I don't care if, say you do great, like, oh, I get a good education and all this, or life is easy, no, okay? It's always gonna be hard work. Anything you want to do in life is gonna be a hard work, okay? No matter what it is. Now, I know some of y'all come from backgrounds where are struggling, so like that, you know, you don't understand Doomsday, I have this BS going at home, and all this, I understand and I get it, because I haven't went through the exact same, the same struggles as y'all. Okay, I'm from here, I'm from, from Boston, from Dorchester. Everybody knows who know Do 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 Dorchester is, it's a rough effing neighborhood. It's hard, it's hard. I gotta deal with police, okay, being on the you know how that, that is. It's the police sees us, you know, automatically we're suspect or aware we must be doing something wrong. I had to deal with that growing up, I gotta deal with bullies, Growing up, I had to deal with drug dealers, I had to deal with game, game members, all that. And it was so hard because when we come from that, 
it's, it's harder for us because the teachers, some teachers, some people understand the schools, what we come from, what, what, how hard it is. You know, you, know, you talk to teachers, and you're like, listen, you don't understand. You know, they tell you, be good, do school, you know, do this, do that. But they don't go home when you go home to. And I understand going home to that BS sometimes sucks, especially in your neighborhood. Go ahead. Um, I was going to say, I think that when they see you and automatically Lauren's kiss, they have a wall up sometimes. Yeah. And they're like, oh, he says he knows where we're from, but I don't think he really knows. So I actually told them the story of when I was, I left my job early, okay, and I wasn't supposed to, remember? And I was in the back of Water Street near the auto body shop. It was my friend Stevie from the high school, had to go drop the letter off for his grandma, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Three dudes jump into a minivan. Now Water Street, you went, you came down Water Street. Raise your hand if you guys live on Water Street. I remember when okay. Three dudes, three dudes jump into a minivan in front of me, and all I heard is blah, blah, blah. So this is what these kids are dealing with, and I don't think they understand truly why you're here. Okay? So I want to break that down, and I want to show you guys the connection of why I think he's a perfect speaker for you guys. Because even though he's saying it, he's from Dorchester and Roxbury, and even though most of you probably haven't even been to those places, there are areas outside of Lawrence that children face the same sort of stuff, or even worse, okay? So th I'm telling you, these kids, I mean, I know you spoke to our South Lawrence East Middle School kids, but the Gilmet kids to me, and that's why I brought you here, they're something special to me. Um, because these kids really, they have gone through it, they've seen a lot, and I just feel as though they, you know, they need to truly listen. As, because these are mostly 8th graders and 7th graders you're talking to. In three months, they're off to high school. Exactly. So this is what you're getting. All right. So let me explain something to you from Dorchester. 